ladder logic programming in the RS Logics 5000 arena. We already did one on the RS Logics 500, and that is actually the least expensive route into learning ladder logic. And the ladder logic programming that you learn in 500 is directly portable for the most part into 5000. So you're better off learning with 500, but let's say that you're going to learn with 5000. So what is RS Logix 5000? What arena are we talking about? Well, primarily control logix and compact logix family. Now there's actually flex logix, soft logix, drive logix, but these are the two primary platforms that we're concerned about. And if you learn to program in one, you can program in them all. As a matter of fact, we recommend Compact Logics because it's it's much less expensive. So what is the difference between RS Logix 5000 and Studio 5000? Because this could confuse you when you're trying to figure out what to buy to learn with. Well, it boils down to CPR. And if you try to remember everything that we're going to talk about during this presentation, you're going to need CPR. However, what we're talking about is coordinated product release. About every nine months, Rockwell releases a new version, if you like, or a new edition of RS Logix 5000, or now it's actually Studio 5000. There are no new releases for RS Logix 5000. They are all Studio 5000. But you need to understand it's the same license. One license gives you access to Studio 5000 and RS Logix 5000, and you may need both of them in order to work with we'll call it the 5000 Arena. And what I'm showing you here are two different locations on their website when you want to download either one of these two products, RS Logix 5000 or Studio 5000. Now, RS Logix 5000, I started with it back in around 2000, and I think it was released 1.8 or 2 or something. I can't remember. If you go online now and try to download the oldest version, you're going to see what I'm showing you right here. It goes down to 6.2. 7.2 and so forth. You see that it goes all the way up to 20. But 21 is in the other column now. That's Studio 5000. So the only difference between RS Logix 5000 version 20 and Studio version 21 is a newer release. The front end is going to look a little bit different and it supports different hardware. But there's more to it than this. There's also something called Enterprise. We have Studio 5000, but then in RS Logic 5000, we have Enterprise, which is releases 10 through 20, including 10 and 20 and everything in between. That was called Enterprise, and prior to that, they didn't have a name for it. Maybe it was standard, but it was one release only. Now, let me explain to you what that means. Prior to version 10, when it became Enterprise, there were six or seven possible versions you could have been working with. And so let's say that you did a project in version 7 to, as an upgrade, say, to a processor already running, and it was on 5. You would have to remove, completely remove the software from your laptop, and then load that earlier version, do your work, make your changes, do whatever you had to do, then remove that earlier version and go back and reload the newer version. Now we're talking about hours of work removing and reloading software. Well this became a nightmare and Rockwell didn't foresee this back when they released the first version of RS Logix 5000 because with RS Logix 500 there were only two or three major release releases in 15 years. Whereas with, we'll call it 5,000, there is a major release approximately every nine months since 1999-2000 when they started releasing. And you couldn't have two versions loaded on your computer. You could only have one at a time. One release only at a time loaded on your computer. And with Enterprise, when it came out, you loaded 10. You could have 10 and any one of the earlier versions, 8 or down. Then when 11 came out, you just added 11. So now you had... 10, 11, and some earlier version, and when 12 came out, you added 12 and so forth, that there's this dividing line between release 21 and release 20. Everything prior, 20 and prior, is RS Logix. Anything 21 and later is Studio. The chipsets that they build these processors with, they don't have the market availability that they used to have for some of the older processors where you could keep buying the same chipsets from Intel, AMD, whoever, for years. So the very first Control Logics, which is the one that came first, 
it had a particular chip chip set. And then one day Intel calls up and tells Rockwell, hey, we're gonna stop making that chip set. You know, you got eight more months to order chip. So Rockwell had to scramble and redesign the processor for a new chip set. So here comes another level of processors, different firmware level, different chip set. But guess what? Newer chip sets are faster and open the door to develop more features, which was a good thing. From release 20 going on back, there were at least what I would call three, maybe four time zones of chip sets and major changes, which means that not all processors that are supported prior to the release 21, in other words, under RSLogix, not all of them are supported by all of the first uh, 18, 19 versions of RSLogix 5000. So you have to be very careful when you're doing a project that if you pick an older processor or you have to update a customer's machine and it's got a processor with version 12 on it, release 12, there's a good chance you can't make the changes with 20 and then download it to that process. Each processor has to have its firmware flashed to whatever release that you're going to program with and download into it. In other words, if you write the program in 19, you can't download it into a processor that's flashed to 17. You're going to have to flash the firmware in the processor up to the newer version, then you can download that program that's at the, the newer release level, okay? Now, add to that that there were a few processors that were supported in release 20 and release 21. I was thinking it was the L43 and L45, but then as we go up with release 21, there are newer and newer processors. Since release 21 was released back whenever, there's been at least two big jumps in processors. If you open up 32, release 32, and look to see what processors are available in compatibility chart, by the way, that's the, or the document number right there to do that. You go find that, download it. You can look at the compatibility and the compatibility make for this whole picture could blow your mind if you try to memorize it or get ra too wrapped around it. So you just have to pay attention to what you're doing. With RS Logix 5000 and Studio, the software itself, there's three categories. That's 21 and up Studio, 20 and down is RS Logix. But within 20 and down, something changed between 10 and the previous version and that's going from we'll call it standard or one only release on your computer at a time to enterprise where you could have all of those loaded on your computer. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of RS Logix 5000 and Studio 5000. If you open them and I have both of them on my computer so I opened up both of them and this is exactly what I saw. One of them you see 5000, RS Logix 5000, the other Studio. If we start looking at our opening screen here, we see open project, new project, open sample project, etc. If you look over on the Studio 5000, you see something very similar. So those are comparable. What you're used to seeing, open, new, etc., is still there. It just looks a little bit different. And then recent projects, controller projects, they're still there. They just look a little bit different. If you create a new project, whether you're using Studio 5000 to create a project for an older controller for a customer, because a lot of customers don't want to go to Studio. They just don't want to do anything too new unless they absolutely have to. You would be doing a new project. So if you were to click on New Project in either one of these, RSLogix or Studio, this is what would pop up. RSLogix 5000 pops up with New Controller. But Studio pops up with New Project. And the reason it does, which puts an extra step in there, notice that new project for Studio has a choice between Logix and View. That's because you can do your panel view, if you want to call it that, and your controllers all under the umbrella of Studio. That was the whole idea. But if we compare these two, you have to pick a processor, and I, you're not going to normally find the same processor available to pick in both RS Logix and Studio, so they're different. But you pick the processor, so in RS Logix 5000, you pick the processor, you pick the revision level that you want to program at. And by the way, it shows 20. If you drop the arrow down, it would show all of the versions that I have loaded on this computer. Not all the ones that you can program the L45 with, but the ones that I have loaded on my computer. So if 20 is the only only one I've got on my computer, that's the only one you can pick. Any given a name, Monkey Shines or whatever. Okay, so right now it looks pretty similar. Now, with Studio, you're going to click on Next, and when you do, you're going to get another screen 
and here is where you're going to pick revision and expansion I.O. Now there was no expansion I.O. in RS Logic 5000. With the L45 you're going to add modules in the project. With this particular 1769 L18ERM it's a type of processor where I have to specify how many expansion I.O. modules I'm going to use in advance and pick the revision level. Okay so now we're studio is now caught up with 5000 there was one extra step there and OK finish and voila now I expanded the plus sign next to main program to show you one of the differences that's going to pop up now if you look down at the bottom IO configuration you're saying well that's different well if I had picked a fixed IO compact logics I would see something very similar over on the RS Logix 5000 side but I picked two different things but this is the default IO configuration there's even though you see something different it's really not any different because the one on the right would be exactly what you would see on the left if you would pick that type of controller that had fixed I.O. So that L18BB1B has inputs and outputs built into it. The L45 does not. It's a standalone processor. So I expanded. Notice that under main program you see parameters in local tags. But other than that these two screens are absolutely dead nuts identical. RS Logix 5000 is identical to Studio 5000 at this point point with exception of parameters is a new feature available with local tags and we're not going to explain what that is because this is not a class on the software. Now I created a rung of logic in each one it looks identical to show you that the logic is going to be identical in both. It looks identical and there's only one new thing that I didn't point out and that's the logical organizer which was not available in RS Logic 5000. It's a new feature. If you click on that you have a more focused access to all of the logical stuff you're doing in this case main program. Now, if you had more than one program they would show up here and it kind of pairs down the controller organizer into just the logical organizer. Actually pretty cool. Now what is the difference between each of the seven editions of RS Logic Studio 5000? Money that's what the difference is. And the ones that we are interested in, because I'm telling you, you if you're going to learn 5000 and you have to buy something, you want to use Compact Logic. So if we go all the way over to the far right, that version is only good for upload, download, and view only. You can't do any editing. So jump back, one from the right, mini edition. This is typically what I recommend that you buy, and that is just under a thousand dollars. If you jump to the light edition, that's more than double. That's over $2,200 going from the mini edition to the light edition. So what do you pick up between the mini and the light? Drop down in your columns and you see that all of the languages other than ladder logic diagram, all of them support that. You can't edit it with a service edition, but all the others support full editing. But when you look at function block diagram, structure text, sequential function charts, you'll see that the light edition supports those additional languages. I use the full edition which is the second from the left. I, I really don't even know what the professional edition gives you that the full edition doesn't. It's probably things like timing diagrams, trending, and what have you. But if you're going to do just compact logics and you, to learn with, then you want the mini edition that's, just, that's under a thousand dollars. Now what is the least expensive path to learning ladder logic diagrams with a PAC, Programmable Automation Controller, in other words Compact Logics. You need a processor. This is an L31 with two RS-232 ports on it. This is the least expensive thing you can buy out there. You need a power supply. Um, I would recommend the 24 volt DC version, not the 115 volt, just to avoid the shock hazard. And you're probably going to end up needing a 24 volt DC power supply anyway. The 115 volt version power supply will give you 24 volts DC but you're putting it at risk connecting it to circuits that you design and you wired up. No offense. Okay so you need a processor, a power supply and these all connect together with connectors in the upper back corners. You see the little uh, connector there and it's got a little white lever tab on top that once you slide these together you can slide the connector from one module towards the left into the previous module. So processor, power supply, input module, output module, and end cap. You have to have an end cap. And what this does is it terminates the back plane impedance wise. Your or you could do this. Instead of this, you can do this, and this gives you the same thing and more. 
Here you've got 16 in and 16 out. Here you've got 16 in, that's the blue. Green is 16 out. And then you've got analog in, analog out, that's the brown and yellow. And then you got high speed counter. These are cool, but notice that this has two RS-232 connectors on it, just like this one does. It, so you need the hardware, and then you need RS Logic Studio 5000 Mini Edition, and you need hands-on programming manuals to go with it. In other words, you need projects to do, step-by-step -step project. And if you need more explanation, you would want to access these two sets of video disc. So these two manuals, it's one set. They don't come separate. It's 400 pages of hands-on projects, and the two disc sets are video sets. They could be on USB jump drives as well. There's 25 plus hours of lecture discussion specifically on 5000 and the lab projects that you're doing. The most effective path, this was the least expensive, RS-232. This is the most effective and that's using Ethernet. So here we jump from an L31 to an L32E. Now I didn't put the image on here but this guy, if you replace that upper RS-232 port, 9-pin sub-D shell with an Ethernet port, this becomes a Compact Logics L23E. So you want, if you're going to do one of these bricks, you want an L23E or an L20 whatever E. You want the E in there. So Ethernet is the most effective. So you see the difference between the least expensive and the most effective is only a couple hundred dollars between the processor with no Ethernet and the processor with Ethernet. The advanced subjects such as function block diagrams, structure text, sequential function charts, motion, add-on instructions, and all that stuff, that's all in this manual. I think this manual is 300 and some pages. And there are two disk sets that cover discussion of all the projects in this manual. This manual used to be two manuals, black and cyan, black and green. We combine it into one. So if you happen to find the two manuals that are these two colors, the black and blue and the black and green, as separate, these discs go with those two manuals or with this manual. Of course, you're going to need light switches, an ethernet cable, and a power adapter. You don't have to buy my lights and switches. You can build your own. There's nothing there but toggle switches, push buttons, and LEDs. And then we went fancy. We got an on-off switch so you can turn that off and on and a little pilot light that shows you that you've got power to your I.O. And then, of course, fly-outs that connect to your I.O. modules. And then you need a 24-volt DC power adapter. You could run 24 volts DC from that power supply that I showed you to this switch light box, but you are risking that power supply if you make a mistake on your end. I want to quickly point out, if you go to our website, PLCE University, and go to Virtual Classrooms, Room 101, Basic Electricity and Magnetism, is going to have lectures on basic electricity and magnetism, which is generic to anything in any controller. And you may want to peruse through those if you're a newbie, because with industrial stuff, you do have to know more about electricity and magnetism than you do with computers or apps on cell phones and tablets. So if you're coming from that arena, make sure that you understand electricity and magnetism, then you can go back to the next classroom, room 102, an introduction to programmable logic controllers. And although this is not specifically RS Logics 5000, these are all more or less generic to any kind of programmable logic or automation controller. Then go back to the virtual classrooms. Now, if you were learning with the, we'll call it the free software 101100 MicroLogics, which is not 5000, then here's a bunch of free lectures on the lab projects in that manual. Or, if you go to the 1400, here's all the lectures on all of those lab projects. Then there's also the Micro 800, and then down at the bottom is Programmable Automation Controllers. So in this classroom, there are a few free lectures on RS Logics 5000, but not not anywhere near a third of them. So this is about the first half of the first set. I say do I have some add-on instruction that would be out of the advanced. So it's just a scattering of different lectures that we put on here free. And of course if you open up one of these, for instance um, task in RS Logics 5000. Welcome to the next lab discussion video. That's 36 series. minutes. 
This now remember the complete PAC Learn series. The RS Logix 5000 and Studio 5000. You already saw the only differences, and what you're going to see in these lectures is identical for both. If you close out of that, then you're right back in the classroom. So that would be how that you use PLC University when you're learning ladder logic diagrams for either 500 or 5000. Let's take a look at what's in that manual. This is part one. Now remember, it's two documents, two separate spiral bindings make up one manual, and I'll explain how they got separated. So I'm going to go through here real fast, explaining to you what's in here. This was a comparison of Studio, if you were going to use Studio instead of 5000, creating projects, and you can see it's all step-by-step, hands-on, very complete explanations. There are a few spots where we actually discuss certain things, but most of it is hands-on, step-by-step lab project. And of course, we're not doing this slow enough for you to read it because that's not the purpose. It Just to give you a glimpse inside the manual, it, every single page. The second binding are all of the practical application. First binding has all the procedures and processes for creating projects, editing projects, and explaining the instruction set, some of the instruction set. The second document actually has the hands-on applications, conveyors, etc. You see it has a very similar look. It's all hands-on, including in the back here we have a section on flashing firmware. 